I'm gonna try something new. Both of my wood sticks are cracked. And I do drills with these kind of. These are used to be industrial kitchen legs. Um, I got them from a um, church that dubs as a homeless shelter that I used when I was homeless, I got services from. And then when I wasn't homeless, I actually worked as a security guard for them for a little bit. And then um, did a little bit of volunteer work too. Very little. Um, I did more volunteer work when I was a homeless person than I did when I wasn't. So, but when they were remodeling, they got a new kitchen, two government grants. And these legs were just throwing out there, four of them. I gave one, another one away. But I just thought, wow, these things are freaking pretty vicious. I mean, almost like Persian clubs kind of shit. I like club weapons. Um, so I do, I do drills with them. Uh, let's see. So just basic. Um, Take this hat off. So, I mean, I'm in a closed space, so. They have some weight to them, not too heavy, because I mean, they're hot rolls. But, you see, they're pretty good. The tips, I mean, you could say they're phallic looking symbols. This one, but what I've never done, and maybe let's just start with one actually. I don't want to do too much too. Oh, let me set this up. Okay. So the basic drills for Kali. Yeah, that brings it down. I don't know, that might work. So I think, actually with these, I'm just gonna practice upwards. So I'm coming from. Fun. I gotta re reinforce. I don't know, that might. I gotta do some reinforcing up there somehow. Screws, nails, whatever. Glue. So, but in the event of real fun, so you wanna go. What I've been trying to do when I have the uh, wood sticks is make sure you change levels all the time. Whatever's up, come across, down, up, down, side, side. So I'm gonna work on that. This is my first time doing that. I don't really like the way it looks yet, but I did this yesterday. So this I got when I was homeless. Before I had those, I was walking in Pasadena. And this was laying on the sidewalk. And at first I just kicked it out of the way because I was like thinking, you know, somebody with a bike or skateboard is going to get in the way. And there was like a little tree thing. So I kicked it. When I kicked it, I was like, whoa, this shit is heavy. And I walked away about 
10 or 20 feet and my brain was storming and I was like, wow, that's, I don't know what that is. That's worth keeping. So that was in 2020. That was about um, June of 2020 that I discovered this. And um, the way I was able to carry it around is I got one of those, went to the 99 cent store and got one of those uh, floaty things for the pools. And I cut it down the center and then I put it into two halves so that I could um, put it around this and you couldn't see this. It just looked like I was carrying a floaty thing. So I've kept it with me. I found out since that it's an industrial tent stake. It's 36 inches long. It's eight pounds and it's uh, awesome. This is one of my warm up exercises because just for uh, shoulder endurance, hand-eye coordination, actually you want to get away from hand-eye coordination so it's just natural. Uh, the momentum, the control, the rhythm, this is a good way to do it. And then of course you want to go both ways. You could notice a dominant and an inferior. That really gets your shoulders going especially your back shoulders because remember too when you're if you want to punch hard you want to punch in a way like they teach you you don't want to just do this you want to be able to punch over and that extends it too so somebody who's doing this you know so somebody that's doing this you're adding on almost two feet to your range and how you can get into matters because you're coming like this and you're practicing keeping your hands up that's good but anyways part of that has to do with foot movement so i see this continually still to this day it boggles my mind i thought with the advent of mma that you were going to start to see um a evolution in boxing as well and where boxers were going to start breaking the mold and becoming uni stance instead of you want to instead of buy stance because that might be too homophobic for some of you fucking faggots that are too scared of shit like that call it uni stance universal stance so that you're not limited by any stance because i see this continually even like with this guy the last fight that was popular ryan garcia he is trained to stay in one stance and it doesn't matter how much damage a part of his body takes for whatever reason. In the kickboxing, sometimes it happens. And in MMA, there are still people in MMA that cannot change their stance. So you can't afford to be that orthodox or that stuck in your mind if you're doing for self-defense or for fighting outside of professional because you don't want to get hurt. That's, even if you're not fighting com combat or whatever you want to call it, self-defense, you don't want to get hurt just as an amateur, just as a hobby. And the more, as in all things, just like with the mind, Bruce Lee, no bullshit, flow like water, the more restricted your movements, the more suffering you create in your life, whether it be your ability to solve problems and figure out, hey, what can I do to develop my fitness well i don't have a gym membership so fucking i don't i can't do nothing so to um to diet you know what are my options for eating well you know what i don't have any options so i'm just gonna go get some fast food um what are my options for entertainment well this is what i like so i'm gonna just get what i like so there's a reason in psychology and myth mythological stories. Um, if you were like my age, 45, you might have watched DuckTales, and there was an episode where they came across a god named Circa. It was actually Circa in Latin. Circa, sorry. Um, but uh, Circa is what we say in English. And um, in the cartoon, she's, she's like a pig princess, and she has an amulet that she looks through, and she says, hor hor um, Hocus Porcus. And then she turns people into pigs, and that's based on the old Greek mythology of the sorceress, Circa, Kirka, who lived on an island, and um, I forgot who it was, Odysseus or somebody, came and landed on there, and she turned his men into pigs. 
this goes with spirited away for somebody that's younger and into anime when the parent when they get there and the parents are just like hey don't worry daddy's got money daddy's got credit cards eat and the little girl's like no i don't want to eat and the parents eat and then they turn into pigs a pig though not stupid is a symbol for something that has no frame of mind other than consumption 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 and another i guess you could say variation of that psychology is a cyclops now they say the origin myth i just saw this recently on this uh great youtube short guy he does uh morbid facts one all he's i love his things he's one of my favorites he did um something like uh artifact porn part 699,000, and he showed the origin uh they believe the origin this is because the linear mind has to make sense of everything so they find um woolly mammoth skulls and they have a big hole in the middle of them and it looks like if you compare it to a human skull it looks like that's for an eye as opposed to it being the nasal the nose for the big ass trunk so they believe they want to believe that the origin of the cyclops myth comes from an actual seeing this and misinterpreting it as being a real thing because that's how they thought but those people didn't use they didn't have they weren't um literate so they didn't use the left side of their brain so they didn't make those kind of conclusions they didn't jump to those kind of conclusions they made up stories to explain phenomena experiences observations and the origin of the cyclops myth is a 2d person and you see this with uh, futurama with lila and you also see this in one of a great episode one of my favorite episodes of rick and morty where he goes to um uh he goes to the uh the place where you can't die and um oh is it the whirly girly no no he's with morty on this one so anyways they go through some Oh, no, no, yeah, so it's the world of dirty conspiracy. So when they're coming back and they go through the wormhole um, and they come out of the wormhole and they're all in a daze and they're all euphoric and wow, our souls are merged and Rick transforms his arm into this device to steal away the gun so that he could kill the guy before the guy realizes that they're not friends because he's still in a high. And he uses his high-tech arm to shoot like one of those suckers those black pong things and steals the gun away and it's hang, dangling from a thread like a fishing pole at the end of his metallic arm and his one eye is all computerized and fucking a big ass advanced scope and the other eye is normal and so he's reaching for the thing and he's like <sighs> he's uh, the thing is dangling right here by the end of his mechanic arm and he's going oh, oh, and he's having trouble reaching it because he has one eye, that's a joke. It's a 2D, you don't have depth perception. And when you don't have that in life, you create suffering. And if you don't have that in fighting, you make yourself vulnerable to actual fucking suffering. So the less, the least amount of movement you have, the least amount of power you generate, you go into a fight, and your range of movement is just this, the person you're fighting is not gonna feel the effects of your, of whatever your intentions are. If you have a slow range of motion, if you have too much of a range of motion and you're doing this, which allows you to do, then you're leaving yourself vulnerable. Too much or too little. It's the right, I mean, you don't got to do that one inch punch, but you do want to keep it tight and you want to. So, on that, I came up with this exercise to help me develop one, just endurance for impact. Because one thing that people don't think about in a fight is that it is actually hard work to get hit and it's almost harder work to hit successfully if you want to be able to do damage to your opponent you have to be able to hit them in a way that utilizes energy you have to get energy to go to them and if you don't have the ability to regenerate that energy in the act of exerting energy you get burnt out and you see this with a lot of buff guys and like street peeps. these guys they go in there and they think that they could beat the person up within the first they're only three minute rounds so they think they could beat the person up in the first 30 seconds they give it a oh, 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 oh. and next thing you know the rest of the round they're using their big ass muscles to cover up and to protect themselves and they come out in the second round oh, and then the same thing so you don't want to be in that position because yeah it's nice and safe right there but outside of that environment that puts your life in jeopardy 
So one of the things that I came up with yesterday for just whatever hand-eye coordination is um, an awareness. So I want my front foot here. I bring this around. I can get into the flow. And the other thing too is practical here because you want to be aware of your environment. You're never going to be in the perfect environment in a fight. If you're in a perfect environment in a fight, you're probably a bully. So, obstacles. Learn how to navigate. So there's other ways I can do this. My front foot. When I swing, I want to bring this around. I want to switch over. And I bring this around. Switch over. And I want to find a motion where I'm using as little energy as possible to switch stances and to move. You don't have to move a lot. Like I saw a great training video for boxing, and the guy was saying, um, when you're moving, when you're doing head practicing head movement, he says, an amateur tends to want to practice and do all this crazy shit. But a pro just wants to keep it tight because you don't want to exert too much energy. So you want to figure out how to utilize movement most effectively with the least amount of energy. So one on front leg, and you're going to do boom. The more fun something is, the more easier it is to do.